so the thing is, I have been involved with new activism only for the past, I would say, three or four years. My own journey of activism is quite distinct from others. However, I do feel that my life story in many ways represents the state of youth today. Um, I do feel quite sad about the fact that I'm not able to give this talk in uh, Nebalasa. Uh, but I hope that you know, I'll be able to negotiate the story of language. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time to put my point forward. So, um, and of course, like you might have seen, there's already this disconnect that's very clear by the time that we've arrived at my position. I'm already not able to speak the language, and also, like, I've come prepared with another set of notes. But I'm going to start these because I want to reflect on some of the things that have already been addressed a little bit before. Thank you very much to uh, Maniki Sunil Jun uh, for talking about the concept of generation to begin. We need to question that, true. And then thank you very much also to uh, Dr. Tinda Balutari for talking about women's involvement. And so much thank you for bringing about um, all of our issues related to road extension activism. To build up on this and to talk about this question of what is a generation and is there a generation gap? So the last generation which we can consider in a way is the one with that demanded autonomy, is the one that talked about governance rights. So has that generation ended and have we moved on to another? I think that's a good question. So if I were to try to answer that through my own experiences, I do feel that there are some new ideas in a political and philosophical sense that are entering, that are perhaps marking a generational shift somewhere. First of all, the struggle for Newa autonomy is not complete. Um, we're still very underrepresented in government. Many laws and policies are still being formulated that are against the interests of our community. So yes, that continues. There is no disconnect in that sense. But there is a disconnect in the sense that we are talking much more about intersectionality today than we were earlier. Yes, even in the past, there was this struggle for women's, Newa women's involvement in the Newa movement. And this has always been a contentious issue of how they are represented, especially in higher levels of leadership. Just like uh, what Dr. Bolidaya said, you know, if it's a very token-like position, being a host, performing a dance, and uh, that's what Newa women are called for. But when it's time for leadership, we don't see Newa women being represented at all. So yes, that is equally. But the other angle is, aside from just women, I think there's also a growing acknowledgement that there are other gender and sexual minorities among the Newa who do have a place. And similarly, there are other issues, such as class divide, are even among the Newa, like Newa who have historically been considered the work at, let's say, they're still not representative, and what about them? Right? So all of these issues, I think there is a growing awareness, and that is uh, being added to the social paradigm, the political paradigm of the movement of this generation. Another thing that's marking the change is a shift in circumstance. So I do feel that a lot of earlier Newa movements they had a very strong basis for understanding their identity. You know, the, the Rana autocracy, or the monarchy, you know, fighting for political change. So there are all these circumstances that helped them define who they were. You saw it that regard that any new among one sense a very ideological thing. Only the Avastha, only the Parastha, only the Avastha, na market forces are you. I'm reviewing the policy of you. You saw it today. You got that thing. I'm not identifying with that fully. So a friend once said to me, for our generation, we have always been told what we can be. Give us something. Jisai, jisai, two, three, four. But two of what? What you got? Two of man, see, one name, doctor, one name, engineer, one name, one name, one name, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. We are always told what we can be, but we are never told what we are. So if we don't know who we are, 
what, what does that amount to? What can we truly be taught in any meaningful kind of sense? So I think there's a kind of pedagogical disconnect as well within the families, within the institutions. How do we hand over this knowledge of who we are to our succeeding generations? I think that this is somewhat of a watershed moment. We are arriving at this stage because of things like the, the massive scale of heritage destruction that happened after the earthquake Hello. and the sort of mismanagement that is happening around Hello. that preservation because of issues like Man, we do the same as the like city and the outer region and so on, there is a kind of awareness that is developing. And other things such as like just the, the, the scale of urbanization. For example, a few months back, there was a conflict in a, in a locality near Poshtati where there was a traditional crematorium and then uh, when the Neo families went there to perform their last rites, they ran into conflicts with their own neighbors. So there's a kind of othering that is happening for us within our own homeland that is causing this kind of alienation. <laughs> and antagonism, they got that thing. But then the thing is, we need to be able to recruit this energy in more positive ways as well. Our activism shouldn't always be reaction. <laughs> it has to begin much earlier. It has to begin at home. It has to begin one's of who we are as a community. This acknowledgement of the legacy that we've been handed and what we need to continue. Thank you. No no video chitha tak ka thinki ko niti. Newa YouTube channel subscribe yana disa. सब्सक्राइब या यंगो बटन क्लिक या ना दिसा अली वो या है ना पहुंच जाऊंगो गाना क्लिक या लो मंका दे मते ना न्यू आई यूट्यूब चैनल चीज सक्सेसिगुना मंका यूट्यूब सुबह